internationally recognized rapper who's notorious for being promiscuous and chugging a case of beer on stage at every performance. This is Abby. She's a devout Muslim, speaks fluent Arabic, doesn't drink alcohol, abstains from sex, and prays five times a day. Now, it may seem like they have nothing in common, right? Well, they do. Actually, they are the same person. Almost two years ago, Kristen converted to Islam and changed her name to Abby, actually Abana. Her mother, Darlene, says Kristen, who she refuses to call Abby, has not only turned her back on her family with her new Islamic beliefs, but on America as well. She's worried her daughter may turn into a terrorist. Take a look. My daughter has quit speaking to me because I don't accept her religion. I grew up as a Southern Baptist in Texas. I reverted to Islam in 2012. I changed my name to Abida a week after I became Muslim. It means worshiper of God. My mother, she refuses to call me anything but Kristen. When I see Kristen being Muslim, I think about Al-Qaeda, terrorist bombings, Osama bin Laden. I never hear anything positive about them, ever. My mother is very ignorant. She has, like, no qualms about being racist. I have gay friends, a lot of gay friends. I know they, they have some problems sometimes with gay bashing and everything, but you've never heard of a gay man getting another gay man to strap a bomb to his chest and walk in a mall. I'm Muslim, and not all Muslims are terrorists. Kristen's been totally brainwashed by these people. She got rid of her clothes. She only wears the scarf, the long dresses. I choose to wear hijab because it promotes modesty and it's pleasing to Allah. She has taken everything American out of her house and replaced it with Saudi Arabia flags. She goes to the stores that sell the food, the kind of rice and bread and everything to eat. And that's all she eats basically now. I love the Saudi coffee so much. I think that they have a hidden agenda for her because of the way things are progressing so quickly. She said they buy me expensive stuff. They have lambs slaughtered for her and bring to her a whole lamb like chopped up for her to eat. I mean, that's like a ritual to them. I pray a lot that she's going to see what she's doing and step out of it because I've lost my daughter to this religion. Well, Abby says becoming Muslim is a much safer choice than her previous profession. Kristen used to be a pretty famous rapper. I got popular enough doing the MC Router stuff that someone made a Wikipedia for me. I got invited to play shows in Holland, in Europe. I did a West Coast tour, played Whiskey A Go Go for the Doors and Guns N' Roses at the point. I'm gonna destroy every part of my PC. I was really proud of her. I would tell her all the time, Kristen, I think this is what you were meant to do. When I was performing as MC Router, I came very close to being an alcoholic. My stick for my stage performance was that people would bring me beer. My set would be an hour, and I could knock out 24 beers in the set. People came to see me get drunk. She was never an alcoholic or even near an alcoholic at all. And I wouldn't know because I've been in the medical field for my entire life. I pick up on drugs, um, alcohol. I work for a treatment center, and I pick up on it really fast. But she posted a lot of it on the Internet, some very provocative things on the Internet. On stage, it was very vulgar and R-rated. I would make out with random fans on stage. I would spit beer on people in the front row. I was sleeping with random fans or club owners, and I'm shocked that nothing bad happened to me that could have from that. After I became Muslim, I had to stop drinking. I had to stop having promiscuous sex. I spend my time reading the Quran and praying on a constant basis. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. MC Router is the complete opposite of who I am today. I believe that her being a rapper is much, much safer than her being a Muslim. No one's going to attack her or coerce her to do something she doesn't want to do because she's rapping and having a rapper's lifestyle. Now, Darlene hasn't seen her daughter in over a year, uh, so she's coming out now. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. 
Rahman Rahim Malik Yomidin Iyaka na pulwa Iyaka na stin Yedino Sirato Mustaqim Sirato Latina Namte Lehim Kairo Makduwi Lehim Waladalin Amin The English translation of that is In the name of Allah Most merciful and compassionate All praises be to Allah Lord of worlds Most merciful and compassionate Lord of the day of reckoning You alone we worship And you alone we seek help guide us to straight way the way of those you have blessed not of those upon whom is wrapped or those who are lost I mean okay uh, with that I welcome you to another edition of the history of human life and diversity of Muslim Americans in New England I am Hassan Rishi your host and I'll be here with you for approximately um, 25 more minutes so it's always excellent being here with you and it's uh such a great achievement to come in your lives like we do each and every day here at CCTV. So I greet you with the best greeting that I know how, the best way that I know how to greet you, and that is a greeting of peace. And in the Arabic language, it is I salam alaikum, peace be unto you. Okay, um, I know you might be curious about that opening video, but it was a video concerning uh, a young lady her name was Abi. She changed her name to Abida after she accepted Islam. So she's a new Muslim. And so it's a great day when uh, young people accept Islam, especially in the Western Hemisphere. She was taken off the street by Allah. She was a street rapper. She's a rapper in the streets. And uh, I'm sure I don't have to explain to you in detail what that means. but. She converted to Islam. All praises due to Allah. We're going to try to get back to that uh, video, which was, uh, she was a featured uh, subject on the Phil Donahue show. Guess what? It's uh, it's still uh, International National Ladies Month. And uh, before we get into some of the matter of our broadcast, I just want to inform you of some of the things that's happening around here in Cambridge that... Uh, are uh, specifically for, well, specifically designed for this month, National Women's Month. That's uh, the um, lecture, there's a lecture and discussion forum entitled Woman Explore. That's a spring 2015 series confronting the title uh, of this uh, lecture and discussion forum is Confronting the Violence Against Women in the World. So women in our world, how do we live cope and thrive. So if you're interested in the following or pursuing some of the activities that's scheduled uh, in our region, in our area, for uh, in celebration, commemoration of this Women's Month, I want to direct you to some uh, some events. That's uh, tomorrow, that's, uh, excuse me, today at uh, Harvard University, uh, there's an event entitled The Origins of Violence, Focus, Lynn Savelli's Lecture, Loop Glowowski, Anthropology uh, at Department of Human Evolutionary Biology, Harvard University, March 26. There's a Religion, Women, Power, and Violence. Focus, Ella Meher, a lecture, Irene Monroe, nationally renowned African American lesbian, activist, scholar, and public theologian. April 2nd, we aren't we protecting the planet that nurtures us. Community focus led by Linza Valley. Uh, lecture Rosalie Anders planning for City of Cambridge, planner for City of Cambridge climate change activists. Okay, uh, April 9th, they're strengthening our bodies, building resilience and empowerment. Focus Paula Kendoha, lecture Lieutenant uh, Amy D. Fergio, RAD coordinator, Harvard University Police Department. Okay, April 16th, violence, social justice, and the city. The legacy of uh, violence uh, living with the fear. Barbara Vil, 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 Vilandry, okay. April 30th, how can we change the culture of violence against women? May 7th, men as allies. What can fathers, brothers, sons, and partners do? Um, May 14th, joy, beauty, and possibility in the face of harrowing reality. So Thursday in Harvard Square, Cambridge Mass, 11 a.m. focus, 12 noon, 1 p.m. main lecture, 1 p.m., 1.30 discussion at Democracy Center, four, Democracy Center 450, 45 Mount Auburn Street, corner DeWolf Street, uh, and the telephone number is 
5740 if you uh, wish uh, for additional information or if you'd like to know more about the Women Explore and the series of uh, events relating to this month which uh, spills over into April and May you can uh, go to the website that's www.womanexplore.org or you can email them info at womanexplore.org or you can uh, drop a a letter postcard or something to W E P O Box 380333 Cambridge Mass 02238 we is an independent 501c3 nonprofit organization with no religious or other affiliation so um, if you'd like to uh, attend this uh, first event well oh, that's uh, that's a uh, that's gone but uh, for, for more information about the schedule slate of events uh, uh, that's scheduled uh, to commemorate uh, Women History Month, National Women International Women's History Month. You can um, check out www.womanexplore.org, okay? And there's another event coming up that's uh, in regards to this uh, Women's History Month, and that's uh, the Cambridge Symphony Orchestra, Sunday, March 22nd, 2015, 4 p.m. There is uh, Cynthia Woods, music director, and uh, she'll be... Uh, She'll be, uh, I guess, conducting or directing the Cambridge Symphony Orchestra, Pines of Rome, Fanfare, La Prairie, Paul Dukes, Jonathan Bram, Piano Concerto uh, Number no. 2 featuring Matt Lewis. Tickets available at thecambridgesymphony.org. So if you're interested in and, uh, uh, going out and enjoying some music uh, conducted by Cynthia Wood, music director, you can, uh, for tickets, you can, you can uh, go to Cambridge Symphony dot or I'm Hassan Rashid and this is the history community of community life and diversity of Muslim Americans in New England and I'd like to tell you before I go on that uh, two more days now it'll be the first day of spring that the vernal equinox so I want you to know that so that you won't be walking around and spinning animation and still thinking that it's winter so two more days It'll be spring, okay? Uh, at the uh, the uh, the uh, Middle East Initiative, that's a uh, uh, Harvard Spring Break. So right now at the Harvard, uh, the students are off on spring break, and they'll return right after the 20th. But uh, next week, um, there are two events scheduled, and uh, uh, at the Middle East Initiative, so they're still waiting. Okay. The, the, the first uh, event is entitled The Politics of Unresolved Refugee Crisis, Monday. That's uh, March 23rd, 4.30 to 5.45 p.m. And this event was rescheduled from February 9th. A seminar with Susan, Susan Akram, clinical professor at Boston University School of Law, discussing uh, her book, Still Waiting for Tomorrow, The Politics of Unresolved Refugee Crisis, followed directly by a book signing at the Harvard Coop. Uh, 1400 Mass Avenue, Cambridge, co-sponsored by the Harbor Humanitarian Initiative. Location, Allison Dining Room, Tubman Fifth Floor. So that's uh, March 22nd, okay? And they're still waiting for tomorrow. The Law and Politics Unresolved Refugee uh, Crisis, edited by Susan M. Akram. And they're at the uh, Allison Dining Room, Tubman, Building Fifth Floor. Uh, Monday, March 23rd. 432 uh 545 p.m. Okay, uh, uh we're gonna move right along. So there's a series of events about this Middle East Initiative. But this is the one that uh, I want to bring to your attention. The WAM is here again. That's WAM, W-A-M, Boston Festival dates uh March 21st. And the WAM is Women Action and the Media. And this is all in regards to the fact that it's National Women's History Month and it's International Women's History Month also. So, um, WAM, Women Action and the Media, are excited, excited that they can finally say that WAM, which is an acronym for Women Action, Action and the Media, WAM, Boston Film Festival, is this weekend. So they're, they're putting on a big film festival this weekend. So they want you to join them. Uh, join them, uh, you out there in the community, this Saturday, March 21st, at the historic Battle Theater in Cambridge for a full day of films made by and about women 
from filmmaking across the globe. So this year lineup is their first, is, is their most exciting yet. For just $15, you can get access to 10 short films, a feature presentation, seasons with filmmakers, and a panel discussion on Boston Films uh, industry, on the Boston film industry. For only $30, you can grab a VIP pass, which gives you access to the best seats in the theater. It's a packed day worth uh, every penny. So they want to see you there on Mina S. Farzad, Community Manager, Women and Action Media. So that's at uh, the Brattle Theater. That's a uh, well. That's Seven Temple Street. Okay, Cambridge. They want you to, uh, if you need additional information, Seven Tem Temple Street, Cambridge, Mass. Zero two one three nine, or you can telephone six one seven eight seven six five three one zero, or you can email wam at womanaction.org. So that's uh, for additional information. But the Brattle Theater is is on Brattle. And that's right across the, from the T-stop at the Harvard Square. So uh, they have a vital lineup of films. Uh, okay, I'm going to give you some of the titles uh, of the film. The okay, or what, or some of the activities. Okay, uh, uh, some things are meant to be whether you like it or not. The drama short program, family dynamics, Layla, Layla, Lola, Le Layla. Lola, Lola is caught in down or economic spiral in Madrid while struggling with her person, personnel crisis of apathy. Her grandma Layla has a heavy stroke in this movie with the emotional humor of Lola and Layla tried to overcome the office of language and crisis. The balloon, a little girl just lost her father in the presence of a balloon, makes her forget everything. So. There's going to be coffee in the morning and not this family ritual anymore. <laughs> okay, that's a, <laughs> something else pertaining to something else, okay? Boston Film Industry Panel. This panel discussion is going to, um, to be announced, presented by WIFVNE, Women in Film and Video New England. Okay, so that's uh, Cambridge Commission. So this is also sponsored by Cambridge Commission of the status of women. Women in film and video New England. So that's uh, WAM. Women uh, women in film and uh, okay well, and uh, and uh, media. Okay, women, film and media. Okay, WAM. W A M Women Action and the Media, okay. Sponsored by also sponsored by Cambridge Commission of the Status of Women. So if you'd like to uh, find out a little bit more about uh, Women Action in the Media, you can check their website out. W A, excuse me, the, their, uh, oh, you can email them. That's uh, W A M at womanaction.org. Okay, here we go. Uh, website www.womanactionmedia.org. Okay, and inquire about the 2015 W A M Boston Film Festival uh, to be held uh, this weekend, Saturday, the 23rd at the Brattle Theater in Harvard Square. The uh, Huma, that's the uh, Harvard University Muslim Alumni, invites you to their annual Harvard Muslim Alumni Dinner. So, on behalf of the Huma, which is an acronym for Harvard Muslim uh, University Muslim Alumni, uh, are inviting you to the fifth annual Harvard Muslim Annual Dinner Saturday, April 11th, 2015, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. at the Western Westerstein Hall, Harvard Law School. So there's still plenty of time to prepare for that one. The annual dinner is a great way for you to reconnect with old friends, meet old Harvard Muslims, and hear from the Huma Board and help further Huma long-term mission, facilitating professional networking and mentoring, supporting the Muslim community on campus, and helping students access Harvard, etc. In years past, uh, they had uh, 130 to 140 alumni and students at affiliate events, and so they are hoping for an even bigger turnout this year. So they're looking forward to seeing you there. So if you'd like additional information, you can contact Asma Jabber at Jabber dot asthma at gmail.com or Mahmoud Safleek at uh, m-s-e-f-l-e-k at gmail.com so that's the uh, fifth annual Harvard Muslim Alumni Dinner coming up at uh, Harvard University April 11th so there's still plenty of time for you to uh, get 
prepared for that. So if you like additional information, I advise you to go to the Harvard Islamic Society's website and they'll have all the information that you need. That's at www.harvardislamicsociety.org. Once again, it's www.harvardislamicsociety.org. Okay, um, now this is, a, this is a, a little message here from the ministry of Eman W. Dean Muhammad. Okay, so the, uh, the uh, TMC, which is the, uh, the, uh, the, the Mosque Cares, the Mosque Cares, the Mosque Cares program, which is the uh, arm of the uh, Ministry of Eman W. Dean Muhammad, seeks to expand the good pool of emerging talents and voices that can enrich the annual Muslim Convention for 2015. So the areas of focus are religion, education, business, culture, family, community, life. This is an exciting opportunity for community volunteering and contribution. So if you like more information on this, you can uh, go to, uh, you can uh, access or send a message through the uh, uh, email. Email, w WD ministry, WD WDM ministry at SBCG l o b a l dot net so they are offering an opportunity for volunteers and contributions for their upcoming 2015 annual muslim convention the areas of focus are once again our religion education business culture and family community life okay um okay also they're happy to share with you and friends supporters some exciting news about a new project project of theirs and it's entitled uh, wdeansuit.com. So with that, you can access this website, this, uh, this address, web address, wdeansuit.com. And uh, for further information, since it's launched 17 days ago, uh, they have had over 46,000 page views. And thanks you to, the, to, you, to you, the number uh, recipes continue to grow so what it is is that they want you to check the website out and if you have any type of recipes to submit them and they can share them with uh, the, the general public so so they want you to submit your recipe help them create amazing community site okay share your recipes main dishes appetizers desserts snacks etc so that's uh wdeansoup.com so check that website and see what it's all about that's i want you to share your recipes with, uh, with the community okay take action push the senate to hold the vote on the confirmation of uh, loretta lynn you know loretta lynn is uh trying to take the uh place of the uh current uh attorney general so this week uh the senators are going to decide uh if they will uh, accept her as a new attorney general or not. So what this notice is to inform you that uh, they want you to call your senators and try to encourage them to, uh, to endorse uh, Loretta Lynn for the uh, position of um, attorney general. So that number, the number that they want you to call is 866-338-5720. That's 866-338-5720. Three three eight five seven two zero, and demand that they confirm Lynch. So they want you to call your senators, your local senators, and uh, confirm Loretta Lynch for Attorney General. That's eight six six three three eight five seven zero two. Okay. Um, there's not too much time left now, but uh, I want to just uh, bring this notice to your attention: the Islamic Relief USA. And they have a campaign to help children in need. Benefit dinner for children all over the world. That's uh, Sunday, March 30th. Uh, okay, uh, March 30th. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We <laughs> we have the wrong uh, address, but uh, the wrong date. But the thing is that their uh, campaign to help children all over the world. So if you're interested in helping the Islamic Release USA to help. Uh, children all over the world you like more information how you can uh, get involved in helping uh, children all over the world you can go to their website that's uh, irusa.org irusa.org and find out how you can help children all over the world okay uh, with that 
we have so much uh, more to tell you, uh, but uh, I, I don't think that the time will allow us to uh, to, to to share any more information with you. But I'll tell you, um, we can get back to uh, that opening video and uh, and benefit, enjoy some of the uh, the the great news on a young lady accepting Islam, former street rapper who converted to Islam. I'm Hassan Rashid, and I'd like to uh, advise you uh, until next time that uh, superior wisdom can never be subjected by inferior wisdom. So uh, with that, I leave you with the best greeting that I know of, and uh, that is peace. And in the Arabic language, that is uh, I salam alaikum. so interesting. You haven't seen your daughter in a year, and I actually stepped way out to greet you so I could get out of the way so you could see your daughter for the first time in a year, and you haven't looked at her yet. I can't. You haven't seen her in a year. This is your child. She's right in front of you. She doesn't look like my daughter. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it hurts me to see her like this because she looks nothing like my daughter. She's changed a lot. How, how, do you, how do you feel? Did you find that odd? Uh, yeah, it's really strange. But you haven't seen her in a year and she comes out and won't look at you till I make her? I'm the same person inside. It's just I've changed things in my life.